Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marketing Watch House and welcome back on the channel. Today we continue talking about GA4 BigQuery events and we talk about the second biggest problem. So the first one is the table suffixes that we solved and this is the piece of code from the last video and the second problem is a nesting. So when the people from Google decided to move to the new structure and like to make all this stuff, they decided to use the universal system of like more universal format on pushing all the data to BigQuery, which is amazing because the system is extremely powerful and you can do hell of a lot of stuff with it. The negative part though is it's kind of difficult for us, for analysts to actually operate and work with this. So we need to put extra time and extra effort in working with this. So what they did, if you look at the, um, in the schema, you have event date, event timestamp, event name and params. And event params is actually the structure. And you can have any kind of events you wanted to push in your Firebase, in your web uh, application, whatever. And it can have any num number of prompts. For example, you have an event button pushed and you can push the color, the time, the text of this button. Uh, whatever else you can think of a button or a form and because you never know what exactly the params are going to be um, What they decided to do is to put it inside the structure and what this structure is if we push the code and look at the events We will see that for example for the first event that should appear just in a second Here it is. This is my first event uh, which is scroll it's the first row and the whole stuff is the one row inside our table, but it has so many different parameters. For example, percent, percent scrolled is 90%. So this event was scrolled up to 90% of the page. If we go further and for example, look at the first visit, this event doesn't have percentage of scroll because this event corresponds to the first visit of the user to our website. And there is also another one, which is page view. This event is actually when persons came to some page, the event happened and Google um, wrote down all the parameters. And in this case it would be term, source, engagement session stuff, and then for example, refer a title. And for each different event, you might end up with your custom event or built-in events is gonna be different thing and different number of parameters. So you need to unnest them and make them available. Otherwise you cannot directly access them, unfortunately. So this is the whole single row and you can't query this stuff. At least I don't know the way to do that. And I've like looked at seven or eight articles and everywhere people say that we need to unnest them to work it. So I can kind of believe in this. So what we need to do, we need to take this and write it on each row uh, uh, to corresponding event param. Actually, the other way around. So we take the event name scroll, event parameter source, put it as one row. So then event scroll, then J session number, second row, and so on and so on and so on and so on, like we do in join. So if we look at this and like literally do that, so we're gonna say left join, unnest, event params, Oh, sorry, I'm on the Kyrillic. So it's gonna be left join, unnest, and then event params, let's say as um, new event params. And then I'm gonna say new event params dot everything comma, and then the old one is gonna be as, uh, events is going to be events dot everything. Sorry, forgot the S. Sorry, I'm recording right now. So it, it's a it's a bit laggy a bit. It's laggy by itself as well. So this is fine. So what happened right now we see uh, the first visit this is my event name and it contains G session number. And this is my first one. It contains page refer. This is my second row. It contains page, page location. And this is my third row and, um, and so on and so on. But because I nested it, I don't really need event params anymore because I already have in this separate row, separate row. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say accept event params because I mean, they, they're just not needed anymore. 
And for simplicity, let's just copy event timestamp from here and say and event timestamp equals this. So right now, if we run it, we should see. OK, now here it goes. So we have event, which is first visit. And this first visit had five parameters inside it, which were GA session number, page refer, page location, GA session ID, and page title. And right now, what we did, we unnested this into a separate row. So for each parameter, we have a separate row. And this is already something. So from this point of view, from right now, you already can see if you have any specific question, for example, how many people uh, seen this page or how many people uh, accepted um, terms and conditions. If you have the event for that, you already can count it. It's already working. So for example, what I can do, I can say page location and I'm going to say um, where and uh, key equals page location and um, let's say value value dot by the way I forgot it should be new event params dot key and then I copy paste this and then it does say value dot string value where this is how it's called let's say says whatever we like it says this one so now we have three different events that happened on this page location so all we need to do is just filter event name that is page view and I will know that only one person in the given data frame actually visited this page with this param. And as you can imagine, it's absolutely exactly the same for any other question. Though there is a problem there. If you want to see on some aggregated view, for example, you want to know how many people came to your website and also, for example, uh, achieved this conversion or that conversion or did something else, you might want to have some uh, more aggregated view, a bit a bit more, maybe session or event level view. And this is not event level, this is the parameter level. So this is what we're going to do in next video, um, just in a minute. And I, of course, totally forgot. Don't forget to subscribe, to leave your comment, to push your like. And if you have any question, Go to LinkedIn, ask me there if it's private uh, or anything that you don't want to share or just drop them back in here in the comments and uh, that actually helps this video to go up. So thank you.